While my personal favorite keyboard layout is a 60% compact design, there are other configurations out there to satiate the 10 keyless market. The Drevo Grammar was one such device before it was discontinued. Back when the Grammar originally released, Drevo was a very different company. Now with several successful new product launches behind them, let's see if the revised Grammar has anything new to offer. The Drevo Grammar is a backlit 84 key mechanical keyboard originally released a couple of years ago, but has now received some updates. It's not quite a version 2, but there are several improvements over the original version. No word yet on pricing or release date, but it is supposedly going to release later this year, and the original was specced at $50, and I expect this to be at least at that price point, if not a little bit cheaper. This is of course a pre-production version, so many things could change by the time the board is readily available. The cardboard packaging, for example, is even more minimalistic than the previous version, but again, it could be part of the fact that this is pre-production. The packaging includes the keyboard, a detachable USB-C cable, various paperwork materials, stickers, a keycap puller, and a plastic dust cover. It's specified as a 75% keyboard layout, which essentially has all the QWERTY keys and modifiers, the number row, a dedicated set of arrow keys, and a function row. What's unique about it is it has 84 keys, which is a lot considering it's only slightly larger than a 60% board, but significantly smaller than a regular 10 keyless. This model is white, but it does come in a black version as well. They do keep the controversial gamer font, which I know a lot of people didn't like. For some reason, they decided to stick with it for now. The legends for the secondary functions were moved to the top instead of the front, which previously was a point of annoyance as they were sometimes not entirely visible. And it uses double shot ABS plastic and the entire board is pretty heavy. The previous version used a steel backplate. And if the weight is anything to go by, it feels like this one uses that as well. It features mechanical switches of the Outemu variety, and they are blue, black, red, or in this example, brown. It is backlit, but it's either a static white backlight or a fixed rainbow, which means every row gets a dedicated color that cannot be changed. There is additional added functionality by using those function keys. You have all of your standard Windows functions, media controls, Windows lock, and even a keypad, which is a first for me. The side of the keyboard basically becomes a number pad if you enable the number lock. It is compatible with Mac OS, but some of those Windows functions are not going to work in that operating system. It has a detachable USB cable, which is now of the USB-C variety, and rubberized feet on the bottom that can angle the board at a fairly aggressive angle if that's what you prefer. And finally, it has N key rollover instead of 24 key rollover in the previous model. That essentially means instead of being able to press 24 keys at once and have them all register, you can press, theoretically, every key on the keyboard and they would all register at once correctly if you were in a scenario that would call for that. While I don't personally get a lot of use out of that added row of function keys, I can definitely see the value there. And I personally really like this board. I've only had a handful of 75% boards in the office, and I could tell you that I can definitely see the merit in this layout. Typing was an especially good experience because of the weight and those really large pads on the bottom. It does not move around at all. I think this stays more stationary than any other board I've used. It's incredibly planted. You don't have to worry about it moving around while you're typing. And typing with these Altemu switches is pretty good. Obviously, it's not going to be as precise as like a Cherry MX or maybe even Gatoron or Kale switches where the tolerances are much smaller. Their consistency across all the switches isn't great, but that's kind of what you're getting with bargain mechanical switches. They feel good, but if you're a professional, you'll definitely notice the differences between the switches on the keyboard. And they actuate at a slightly more resistant 55 grams compared to a Cherry MX Brown equivalent. On to the lighting, which in my opinion is the worst part of the experience. It's a fixed rainbow in the white model. There's no word currently if you can get the white model with a white backlight and the black model with rainbow. As far as I can tell, depending on what color keyboard you get, that's also going to determine the lighting configuration. So it's a fixed rainbow here. I've never really been a fan of that because unless you have a rainbow themed setup, this is going to look really out of place. 
in my opinion, just stick to white or maybe even red or blue. Because the colors are static, your lighting effects are limited. There's only three lighting effects and a fourth being breathe. And I mentioned that one separately because you can actually apply the breathing effect separate from the other three effects. For example, you can have it snake the lighting around your keyboard and at the same time be breathing. I don't know why they decided to make those separate, but that's what it is. You also have four personalized profiles if you so choose, but it only of course controls what keys are illuminated, not what color they are. The keycaps are a bit textured and in my opinion, a little bit grippier than your standard ABS keycaps. And the caps in shell don't quite match. It's almost like the shell is a true white and the keycaps are an off white. And there are some oddball key sizes which could potentially make finding replacement custom keycaps a little bit more difficult. While I appreciate the detachable USB-C connection and the white braided texture of the cable itself, it does not leave sufficient space to route the cables underneath. Being able to route the cables means you can put the cable out to one side or the other of the keyboard, depending on how your setup is, so that you can more easily manage cable management. But unfortunately, there's not enough space on there to do that without bending that cable at a pretty aggressive angle that would make me a little bit nervous leaving it like that for any length of time. The re-release of the grammar will probably be met with even greater success now that Drevo has begun to establish a proper name for itself. While I appreciate many of the upgrades they implemented on the keyboard, some of the design choices are questionable at best. The lighting effects are weak, and this was an easy opportunity to finally get rid of that gamer-themed font that nobody seems to really like. While we don't have pricing yet, the Drevo Caliber V2 sells for $50 and is a superior board in almost every way. If it's going to do well, the grammar will have to be priced accordingly. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you appreciated this video, then give it a thumbs up, especially if you found it helpful and you want to see other product reviews on this channel, then check out these videos here and make sure you're subscribed so you know when our newest content is ready to watch. We're also currently running a giveaway, giving away a Turtle Beach uh, Recon Spark headset. So make sure you check the video description for our affiliate links and also the links to purchase our t-shirts, which help support our channel directly. We definitely appreciate that. And also enter our contest and possibly win some free stuff. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.